Where I'm From by George Ella Lyon. I am from clothespins, from Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I am from the dirt under the back porch, black, glistening. It tastes like beets. I am from the forsythia bush, the Dutch elm whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul with a cotton ball lamb and ten verses I can say myself. I'm from Artemis and Billy's branch, fried corn and strong coffee. From the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Under my bed was a dress box spilling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I am from those moments, snapped before I budded. Leaf fall from the family tree. All right, hey, this is the discussion part or lecture part. If we were in class, I'd be asking you guys a bunch of questions about this poem, but here I'll just give you the information and use what I say here about uh, Where I'm From by George Ella Lyon, poetess. Remember, she is female, despite the first name. Uh, I believe it was after an uncle, and this, the middle name was after an aunt. Um, use my talking points to um, perhaps influence a little bit of your response in second read and working from the text. By no means is mine comprehensive, my point of view, remember that. I offer you a perception, you gotta, you know, do the work and make sure you include or, or focus on your own perception of it, just be able to back up what your perception with evidence from the poem as I do mine. So let's go right to it. I don't really need to read this out loud because I just did in the uh, oral interpretation, but Notice here, I'm going to highlight, uh, the goal throughout this thing is to highlight sensory details that are relevant to smell and, and um, taste and the, the five senses, or five of our senses, physical senses, senses. And so I do that here. She's mainly, and I don't, don't conclude all of them, but she's doing mainly nouns here and noun phrases um, of her home environment including right in between there, and I probably should have highlighted beets, tasted like beets. There's a, a sensory detail. And that interesting, notice they're talking about the dirt under the porch, black, glistening, tasted like beets. Great implication there. <clears throat> and then uh, remember the term, one of the literary terms, and you guys got it right, for uh, repetition of um, a phrase or repeating phrase or word, I am from. She constantly says this throughout the poem. And I think that is one to obviously stress the fact of where she came from and what she grew up from, um, where she grew up. But that also as she becomes her own person here throughout the poem, her past still lingers in her mind. <clears throat> still part of her in a sense. And this visual I just like the play on words comparing um, her to the Dutch elm, the dead Dutch elm, hence long gone limbs. Dutch elm disease ravaged them. Oh, I don't know how many decades ago that was, but killed bunches of trees. And um, here, I think that symbolizes her growing out of, away from her childhood, even though it's in her mind as she refers to from the poem, and it's still kind of near her, hence I am from, not I was from. She's, it's still part of her, even though it may not 
be her conscious self at this point. And cool play on words there with Lems. Moving on, uh, again, more details. These focusing mainly on the people part of her life, it seems. Items, um, names, uh, personalities, you know, know-it-alls, pass-it-ons, uh, Artemis and Billy's branch, the family. Yeah, it's on the humans, the heritage, her upbringing. And then here, more behavioral, I would say. <clears throat> you know, both cultural and individuals, perk up, pipe down, you know, come on, show some energy, don't talk so much, or be quiet, whatever. The religious illusion, restoreth my soul, the ten verses, cottontail lamb, um, all of that, I think, wait, it's supposed to be cotton ball lamb, uh, spell check or correction, I'll fix that, yeah, all of those uh, religious and cultural allusions there and traditions, reflecting her traditions. And then still the anaphora comes on, continues. But notice how she's um, made it a little more concise by using contractions here. And I think she already established the feel, um, the purpose and the meaning of the anaphora in the first stanza. And then in the second and third here, she... Uh, can abbreviate because, um, I don't know, it's more concise. She doesn't have to make as much of the point. And then the uh, last part of that second stanza, frag notice she's got fragments here. These are dependent, uh, well, uh, kind of a, yeah, dependent clauses, um, an absolute phrase, is the first one from from through auger and then the eye my father shut to keep his sight uses fragments here and I just again uh, I like uh, how she alludes to the farm uh, with the auger and such and if you go back to the oral interpretation you see I had a photo of an auger in there and a hunting tradition and I uh, ironic uses irony there you know the eye shut to keep sight but when you think of it normally, what, sight? How do you keep your sight when you're closing your eye? But no, it's when you're taking aim. Keep on the sight of the gun. Um, pretty cool play on words. Good irony there. And again, a lot of sensory details. Very visual. Lots of visual. And then finally, the last stanza. Um, notice the she redirects the focus on... Um, who she was as a child, uh, right, right off the bat, under my bed was a dress box. And then cool verb there for old pictures, spilling old pictures. Imagine the box jammed full, you pull the lid off and all the old photos go away. Photos, do any of you still use physical photos or is it all on our phones now? Um, sift, cool, a sift of lost faces. You know, as if, you know, individual grains or parts of them coming back to her uh, drift beneath my dreams. Notice that they're so, it's a distant, such a distant thing. It doesn't even make it all the way into dreams, the way I interpret that. Or perhaps they influence the dreams if they're beneath it, like a foundation. Hmm, didn't think of that until right now. But then notice, before I butted, the idea reflecting she has since budded and become a mature thinking adult and it separates her somewhat from that distant childhood one last anaphora there and from those moments you know showing her past exists the past you know in red here all these details from the past still exist but i i like to interpret if even if it is, if they're the foundation of her dreams, it's still like a subconscious thing, I think. And then lastly, really cool to kind of drive home the point, great visual here, the leaf fall from the family tree, using that tree as an extended metaphor throughout the poem, you know, symbolizing, and you can see how I wrote that, what an interpretation of a theme, that as individuals we leave our past childhood, and I put that in red because of, to go with the highlighting here, showing images from her childhood. 
we leave it behind and uh, the leaf fall. It becomes leaf fall. They're on the ground. But our cultural heritage, the family tree itself, it still lives on. Just like deciduous trees, they seem to die every year, lose all the leaves, but yet, boom, they come back with fresh new green leaves every year. Rebirth of sorts. So maybe we have something like that to add to this interpretation. So as I say here at the bottom, develop your a supportable interpretation of your own and describe it in 2.2, check your understanding. Hey, also in that one, give me some feedback um, on these presentations. Tell me if they're working, uh, what else, what you'd like to see me do. And I hope you better understand this uh, really good literature in my mind thought-evoking literature uh, that we're going to be interacting with for the next few weeks at least. All right, till the next one. See you guys.